In this section, we're going to be covering the shoulder joint. The first view that we will obtain is a transverse biceps image. The patient is positioned where their arm is slightly internally rotated. The palm is supinated, and we place the probe directly over the anterior aspect of the shoulder. In this view, we see the biceps tendon centrally. To the screen right is the lesser tuberosity, and to the screen left is the greater tuberosity. I'll slide the probe distally adjusting for anisotropy till I come down to the pectoralis major tendon, which is at the point which we're now seeing coming in from the screen right. The pectoralis major tendon indicates that we are at the myotendinous junction of the proximal biceps tendon. I'll then take the probe and move it proximally, again correcting as I move by toggling, so that I can see the intraarticular portion of the biceps tendon here. Next, we'll turn the probe so that it is in the long axis of the tendon. As I rotate this, I will then find the biceps tendon, correct for anisotropy by pushing the distal end of the probe slightly deeper so that the tendon now is parallel to the upper portion of the screen. I'm going to drop my focal zones down, which I just did to make the picture a little more clear, here. And I again will follow the tendon distally to the myotendinous junction, and then proximally up into the interarticular portion of the biceps here. As we go back to the transverse view of the biceps tendon, we use that as our home base view. On the screen right, we see the subscapularis coming into the view. It's angled away from my transducer. Consequently, anisotropy makes it appear quite dark. We want the patient to keep their elbow relatively close to their side as they externally rotate their arm. As they externally rotate their arm, it will demonstrate the subscapularis tendon in a more parallel position to the probe and consequently will get rid of that anisotropy. From this position, we want to move the probe both proximally and distally in relationship to the body to see the full width of that tendon. So as you might imagine, that tendon width is something like this, and we want to examine the full width of that tendon. We will next view the tendon in the tendon short axis by rotating the probe so that the notch is up. Here we see the subscapularis tendon in its short axis view. Now, the tendon appears fairly irregular. We'll see little dark spots and bright spots. Those dark spots represent muscle fibers that interdigitate with the tendons of the subscapularis. The subscapularis is made up of two or three tendon slips that converge together into a single tendon and interdigitated between them are muscles. In order to see the full length of the tendon, we will move both proximally in relationship to the tendon and then distally following the tendon out towards its insertion onto the lesser tuberosity. And we can see as we get approach the lesser tuberosity that the tendon width becomes thinner and thinner, which is quite natural.